The Wickham Wanderers Show. Welcome to the penultimate Wickham Wanderers Show of the season. Coming up in this hour. Sad news, isn't it? Uh, we'll be reflecting on, uh, briefly of course, the uh, defeat at Adams Park on Saturday in the final home game of the season against Cheltenham. We've got our match debrief from Phil. We'll hear from the manager. Uh, Matt Bloomfield will also uh, talk to us ahead of the trip to Pompey on Sunday. Lunchtime. Bit different, isn't it? Uh, that's coming up uh, as well. We'll also hear from Nick Freeman, who's been chatting to us uh, in the build-up to that game as well. We've got a preview of Knowing Me, Knowing Blues, which this week... Features, as it's guest publication, uh, Chris Farino. There's a bit of a scientific aspect to it as well. Make sure you don't miss that. Plus, also, furthermore, uh, with big thanks as always to the Wickham Wanderers X Players Association, we'll catch up with legendary skipper Glenn Creaser, 30 years on from uh, lifting the conference uh, title, which is. Uh, uh, obviously very exciting and we'll uh, really be looking forward to uh, finding out how he's doing as well uh, a couple of years on from his cardiac arrest as well that's coming up uh, in the next sort of uh, ooh, 20 minutes or so lots to get through uh, this hour as well plus of course we've got news about the kit we'll uh, reflect on Wickham Wanderers women as well and lots more to bring you too including catering news and of course uh, our coverage of the uh, final game of the season which uh, as mentioned is at the earlier kickoff time or the later kickoff time, uh, later in terms of the day, uh, earlier in terms of the time. I've made that more trickier than it should be. Uh, but first, uh, let's bring you uh, Phil's take on uh, obviously what was, what was a disappointing uh, both result and performance at Adams Park last Saturday. Yeah, not a great day, really, was it? Um, it's a tough game to commentate on as well, by the way. Yeah, Cheltenham don't have to do a huge amount, but you know they came away three 0 Victors, Alfie May scored. I think a lot of Wickham fans would have predicted that, but even before kickoff, he's a hell of a player. But yeah, Wickham Wanderers were, were not good on Saturday. It wasn't a performance to, to round off the season at home in front of the fans. Uh, and yeah, it was one, you know, I think the manager spoke about taking the medicine this week from that one. Um, but yeah, it, it looked like an end of season display with nothing to play for, which you know, obviously Matt Bloomfield didn't want that. The fans certainly didn't want that. Uh, but hopefully it can be rectified at Pompey on Sunday did some of the changes surprise you no I think um, it, it's good with without the pressure of trying to get the three points to get in the top six with that lifted I think it was good to have a look at some of the younger players um, makes sense really because we're now looking ahead to next season already um, I think Rob the chairman was saying that we we're in sort of already planning that now which is unusual uh, for Wickham because we've already had exciting ends to the season um, but this time we haven't it means that we get a proper break um, but work has already started and I think that lineup was was reflective of that as well um, but again I don't think the changes were why uh, the team played badly as they did um, but it was interesting to ask Matt that after the game uh, and here's what he had to say I'm extremely disappointed and angry about today that wasn't our second half I thought first half we started fairly well on the front foot um, and unfortunately we kind of came away from the game plan a little bit and, and conceded so we're very disappointed about that but we've learnt uh, a lot about the boys today um, you know, I think it's, it's important that um, we learn as much as we possibly can over these last two games you know it was good for Christy Ward to get some more minutes in his legs it was good for um, Gapey to get first start in, in a while um, but certainly not the way we wanted to finish the season certainly not the way we wanted to sign off here at Adams Park and um, the supporters have been turned up in their numbers all season to to support the boys um, and uh, yeah we're obviously very disappointed by, by the way the day's gone Is it about growth mentality at this stage of the season already looking into pre-season and next season and what we can take from today into that yeah it has to it has to be we have to learn as much as we possibly can over these last two weeks because you know it's uh, an important pre-season coming up for us it's important summer coming up for us as a football club and um, we have to prepare and be ready for that so um, no problem with that um, but at the same time we wanted to win the game we wanted to play well we wanted to um, sign off at Adams Park with a good performance um, so unfortunately that didn't happen today uh, he made a few changes coming into this as well. Dominic Gate back to fitness, for, uh, debut for Harvey Cartwright as well. Uh, is that as well looking to the future? Yeah, most certainly so. We have to. We wanted to learn about Harvey. We wanted to see where he's at. Um, he's been training extremely well, um, and we wanted to give him an opportunity to play. You know, also we need to learn a little bit more about Dominic, where he's at um, with his fitness. You know, coming back from a, a, a spell out he's had, and he's again he's been training well, been coming on a sub a couple of times, and we wanted to give him an opportunity to play. So. Yeah, opportunities to learn again, Christy, add to his experience. But at the same time, we want to we want to win, um, and we're extremely dis- disappointed that, that we didn't win today. It's not just about learning; we wanted to win the game as well. 
Uh, Rob, the chairman, has been here this week as well. Uh, he signed uh, the deal before the game to get a 90% stake in the club. Uh, how have those conversations been with Rob this week, having him here? Yeah, it's obviously been um, extremely pleasing for, for that point of view, the, the, the extra percentage being signed over to Rob. You know, he's back into this football club, has been incredible over the last few years um, since him and Pete and Missy have been, been involved here. Um, you know and just before the pandemic who knows where this football club would have been if it hadn't been for their help getting through that extremely tough time so it's fantastic news for us as a football club we've had talks during the week and we've been building plans um, and I'm actually really looking forward to implement those plans Um, so we have to make sure we sign off the season right at Fratton Park next week and then we have to um, do what we need to do uh, really interesting obviously as you say to hear from the manager and obviously you spoke to him after the game in, in the bar afterwards as well that, that must have been quite an interesting sort of occasion if you like yeah I mean Matt as you could hear from, from his voice there was, was quite angry and upset about the performance um, and uh you know, it had been, been announced beforehand that he was going into the bar. Uh, so he didn't shirk it. He didn't, you know, and he went in there and the reception he got, um, I think, really lifted him, actually. You know, the fans singing his name. Um, I think they're appreciative of the situation uh, that he's come into uh, and what he's doing um, and are fully behind him, which was great to hear. But yeah, it was, and it's really good for him as well to be able to thank the fans, uh, those ones in the bar as well afterwards. And, and hopefully he can thank a lot more on Sunday with a good performance. And the chairman was on the pitch as well, signing over the sort of new ownership agreement. That that feels like something really positive. Yeah, it's been a long time coming. Um, having been getting updates from Rob on this for for I think what, eight or nine months now. So yeah, so it's good. I think good news for the club. Rob and Missy on the pitch beforehand signing it um, was a, was a good statement, and hopefully now that can uh, pave the way for you know a decent season next season. And it feels like this Sunday a great opportunity for, for players and, and fans alike to really hopefully uh, enjoy you know, a real high to the end of the season. Yeah, hopefully, you know, an early kickoff on a Sunday midday, um, but it's a wonderful stadium, Fratton Park, one of the great stadiums of English football. I can't wait to see the Spanish uh, fans, Le Medi and Glazer, coming in good numbers. They bring the party uh, anyway. That final day of the season is always a bit of fancy dress thrown in, people making a bit more effort. So it should be hopefully a cracking atmosphere. And I really hope it's um, a game to match as well. Um, Wickham have never won there in the league, so it'd be a good time to do that. And let's not forget, you know, without trying to big it up too much, uh, whoever wins this game will finish eighth rather than ninth. And is there anything in particular you're hoping to see on, on the pitch? Uh, I'd love to see Wickham just put in a really good sort of unified performance, uh, get the win. And, uh, and give us a nice little springboard into the summer. I'm going from the manager a bit later on, but I guess you know, many players will be you know, playing to it to impress him for sort of contracts and, and, and what to do next season. Yeah, you know, I think this term on the beach is banded about a lot in football. Um, and, you know, perhaps understandably after last week, um, a lot of fans were talking about it like that. I didn't see a lack of effort last week. But um, you're right, players and everyone, they've got their futures to look after, be it at the, the clubs they're at, or maybe they might not be here next season. There's going to be a lot of decisions have to be made. So, yeah, look, you know, we've seen it in training this week. It's, it's pedal to the metal, and that's how it should be. And uh, obviously a bit of a journey for you. Is there anything on the en route that you'll be able to hopefully collect, perhaps? Well, I'm taking the train. Um, so uh, yeah the day from Central London the day after the coronation what could possibly go wrong join us next week on the Wickham Wanderer show to find out what possibly went wrong uh, Phil will be uh, speaking to us then uh, he'll also uh, of course be bringing you uh, ball by ball as we don't say enough uh, match commentary uh, on Sunday and you can catch that full interview with um, Matt Bloomfield of course uh, on Wanderers TV as well where you'll also be able to hear full match commentary as well as on Wickham Sound 106.6 I'm very pleased to take uh, Luke joins us uh, to tell us a bit more about uh, what fans can expect on Sunday well I might be able to as I'm going down on what has been referred to as the fun bus um, <laughs> I might be able to actually go to the um, the service station Ah, I, I might be able to bring that this week yeah brilliant might wooden ducks do you think Possi- well no one's actually been able to find any wooden ducks so possibly not are they mythical do you think there's no well they weren't last season and then weirdly uh, since the U- the war in Ukraine they've gone missing so I'm not sure what's happened. We Ooh. did find some headless, oh no, bodiless ones in water stones that have been turned into umbrellas. Oh, okay. Yeah, so there you go. <laughs> Wooden duck news. Yeah, yeah. Join us next week for no mention of that at all. No, uh, but on Sunday, you'll be able to hear, well, this, unless you're listening to this on Sunday, then hello, um, before, t- uh, just after 10 o'clock from 11, we'll be live from Portsmouth uh, to bring you uh, build up to the game. Got it right this time. Uh, and then live commentary uh, with Phil. And I believe Mr. Matthew Cecil, uh, yes. on uh, live from 12 o'clock.
very nice way to wrap up the season. Yeah. And uh, hopefully, as mentioned already, and probably to be heard a few times in the next hour or so, uh, finishing on a high. Yeah, exactly. And I think, you know, obviously last week hasn't been, wasn't the way we wanted it, but... You know, it's still fourth, I think, the best finish for Wickham. Fourth best, so is what I'm trying to say. So that's good. It's all positive. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, so we heard from Phil a short while ago, who we caught up with at the training ground shortly after coming from uh, Adam Spark, where the players were training uh, earlier on today. That sounds like all the wrong way around, doesn't sure, it? it wasn't at the training ground. <laughs> we spoke to Phil at the training ground oh, and the yeah. players who were later at the training ground, having been at the ground where they were training. It's very confusing. <laughs> uh, but we also spoke to uh, Nick Freeman, who is uh, one of the uh, highest uh, appearance performers of the season. We want to finish on a high, um, take some momentum into the off-season and into pre-season, and it's obviously a big game as well. Yeah, so we want to, we want to do things right, we want to do things professional, and ultimately it's preparation for next season as well. So have preparation has been different this week, say, for a normal game, or is it just, uh, just no, another game, really? No, it's the same, just like a normal game, really, but obviously we're not playing for, for anything for playoffs, really, but we'd, we just want to finish the season strongly. I know we've been on a bit of a tough run, but we want to kind of put that right, and there's no way better to put that right than a way to Portsmouth for Fratton Park. And a nice sort of feeling for you as well, having played so much this season as well, after you know, the injury that you went through. Yeah, it was obviously tough last year. I was out for nine months, only made four appearances, and lucky enough, um, I've come back and able to make the most appearances I've made in a season before. So um, I'm really thankful for that, and I'm feeling good. So hopefully to carry that on and have a healthy career. And does it feel like amongst the players, a really kind of optimistic time to kind of really get going forward now as well under the comparatively new manager? Yeah, of course. It's just it's exciting. Uh, obviously, we didn't get to where we wanted to go, but I guess we'll have a full pre-season for. Um, the gaffer to put in implement his uh, his style and his principles um, going forward so he'll have enough time to put that together and then hopefully everything goes together and we'll, we'll start kicking on really and doing really well so we're all enjoying it under under the new manager so yeah and I guess there's quite a nice feeling about you know going into the last game of the season as well yeah, as you say you want, want to go on a high really yeah of course it's, uh, it's been a long it's been a long season there's been uh, plenty of games um, there's been loads of changes of course around the place and like I say we want to we want to finish on a high and play and, and, and First, uh, first and foremost put a good performance in yeah put a good performance in we've prepared right and hopefully get a good result as well and then we can all enjoy our off summer and come back in raring to go it should be a great atmosphere as well for the travelling fans too yeah it's always a good atmosphere for Atten Park it's a, it's a great place to go to so we're all excited for that on, on Sunday Nick Freeman speaking to us there with many people in the background uh, you can- sorry <laughs> One of those was you, wasn't it? It was me, that's why I said sorry. Of course, thank you. But apology expected. Ex- expected? Accepted. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Is it nearly the end of the season? Can you tell? I know, yes. Uh, really looking forward to uh, next, se- uh, next season. Uh, next week, by the way. There's, there's, there's lots to listen out for. Yeah, our predict- predictions, which... Um, we might gloss over that bit. Yeah, we might do very quickly. <laughs> We've got that to look forward to. Uh, we'll name our player of the season. Ooh. That's quite exciting. Uh, well, what else can I tell you? Uh, we've got a, a compilation highlight, a sort of uh, now that's what I call X players, uh, which quite volume two. <laughs> yes, of yeah. course. Well, three, I think. Or two. Well, uh, uh, possibly because yeah. we did a sort of a half one at Christmas yeah. one, one season, didn't we? Uh, so the third series of uh, this program uh, will we'll draw to a close with that. Uh, we'll have lots more as well. Hopefully, obviously, more from the manager, more from Phil, all sorts. It's gonna be good. Hopefully, some of the other players as well. Maybe you never know. Yeah. Keep your fingers crossed. Speaking of players, yes. uh, something which has been a real highlight of this season, no me, no blues. Aha. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm sad that it's coming to an end. And then for this season, it will, gonna, it will be it's, back. It's been recommissioned. We, we spoke to Phil very nicely as um, commissioner of uh, Wondrous TV and said, "Please, please, Phil." Um, we've now paid him a very large amount of money and uh, it's back for a season two next next season. And so many players to find out what their thoughts on Duck Ducks and Bears are. are. Who knew? <laughs> Thank you, Dan Clark, for that question. It's an amazing question um, and um, it's really got some legs on it. Absolutely. Mm. Or, 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 uh, or bears. <laughs> uh, so next, under the spotlight, not that there was a spotlight, uh, but uh, this week, which you'll hear in full on the uh, Wickham Wanderers social media tomorrow, uh, is Chris Farino. Yes, he's very good. Uh, it's a very good episode. That's all I'm going to say. There's quite a scientific feel midway through as well. Yeah, who knew? You're going to learn something from this week's show. Chris, a <laughs> little bit nervous? A little bit, yeah. Welcome to the sofa. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Um, good day of training today, so a little good. bit tired, but excited to do it. And are you ready for these fan questions? Yes. You've got some good ones here, and I think we'll just jump straight into it. So, question one from Silly Little Dream is how does it feel to be called the UCAS Barese? I saw that last season and I was like 
I was, yeah, a bit, a bit shocked to be fair, but obviously I'm Italian, I love like Italian defending and stuff. Um, and I was just laughing. I remember one of the boys sent it to the group chat, and I was like, yeah, that's pretty good to be fair. That is good, being yeah. compared to a legend. Yeah, he is a big, Very big, nice. big legend. Compliment. <laughs> um, King Jamsy said, What's been your favourite away ground that you've played in? Um, I think Portman Road last year, even though we lost 1 0, that was, I think, like my third or fourth game in, and there was like 30,000, so it was a big jump in terms of the numerical um, fan side of things so that was really good I think yeah probably Portman Road yeah yeah yeah. very nice Callum would like to know not sport related what's your favourite deodorant Uh, my favourite deodorant is like I think it's Shaw Men but at the moment I've got Mitchum Shaw Men is the best deodorant I prefer men's deodorant to women's deodorant I feel like it works way better and it smells better as well it's weird because I'm probably the opposite at some times. Really? I nick my sisters. Yeah, yeah, I'll go for my sisters sometimes. Okay, so what's the female deodorant that you like then? I don't know. It's it's black and white and it's like curved. I think it might be Nivea. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it might be that. Okay, there we go then. Um, the Wickham way would like to know, have you set your sights on Wickham captaincy yet? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm a long way off of that. I mean, we've got a lot of experienced leaders, but... I think I, yeah, I captained the team in the Papa John's last year, so that was a really, really good moment in my career. I still look back at that because uh, I think we had a couple of first teamers in, even though I hadn't played in the league. Yeah, that was that was really nice to so captain the team. Maybe one day then. Maybe one day, yeah, I'd like oh, to, yeah. but I think I'm a while off that. Yeah. Uh, John Granville's long throw said, "What is something that's true that nobody agrees with you on?" That's hard. Oh dear. Um, I'm the fastest in the team. No, no, I can't say that. Uh, <laughs> I will say warm water freezes quicker than cold water. Warm water freezes quicker than cold water? Yeah. If you try to make ice out of cold water and warm water, the warm water will go to ice quicker. If Does that make sense? I've worded that horrifically. Yeah. See, there we go. There we go. Type it in later, yeah. Well, I'll have to try that. But I don't understand, so you put it in the freezer what do you mean yeah if you try to get ice cubes for example yeah stick it in a freezer the warm water will freezer reach will the reach the freezing water. temperature before the cold water there you go it it's types true. in there we go true well <laughs> learn something new every day uh rebs would like to know do you have any pets uh half and half so my sister moved out a couple of years ago and i still babysit the dog and my we obviously we've got the last game on sunday um, two days later I'm babysitting our dog so I'm not allowed to go anywhere oh. I was planning to jet off somewhere but yeah I've got a dog for a week got a little dog sitting. pug what dog oh pug pink Cute. lead as well so, pink lead yeah very nice um, Tony would like to know what is your favourite Italian food oh I'm going to a restaurant it's quite boring but probably carbonara Oh, you can't yeah. come wrong with it. Yeah, you, that's the thing. You can't really go wrong unless I'm going to a really nice restaurant, which I don't do too often. Then, yeah, carbonara, the Italian, yeah. You might be offended because you're Italian, but I really like a spicy carbonara. A spicy carbonara? Yeah. I'm a massive fan of spice, so a bit of chili flakes in there. Not, not going to. carbonara. Yeah. There we go then. Um, <laughs> Dom would like to know who trains best in the squad. Mm, it's a hard one because it's obviously different days and stuff, but I'd say overall, probably TJ. Yeah. Probably TJ. Yeah, yeah, he's always he's, he's always at it more often than not. Yeah, well done, TJ. Good yeah, job. yeah. Um, Beverly would like to know what do you like doing when you're not training or playing football? Um, I go on and off the PlayStation. It's quite a man-child thing, but I do go on and off the PlayStation. I go through phases where I play loads of it for like a week and then not touch it. So there's that, and I go to the spa quite a bit, like steam room, sauna, and stuff. Which Without. not yeah, just relax, turn off for an hour and a half. Very nice. What's your favourite game to play on PlayStation? FIFA. Yeah, FIFA. quite boring. Yeah. Um, Harry has asked, "What was the transition like from playing for Loughborough University to playing for Wickham?" Um, I'm quite honest, so I'm just going to say lifestyle. To be fair, yeah, yeah lifestyle change. It's quite different. Yeah, I can imagine uni lifestyle. <laughs> uni lifestyle to professional footballer lifestyle is yeah, quite yeah. quite a juxtaposition. Great to hear from Chris Farino. As mentioned, you can hear the full episode of Knowing Me, Knowing Blues on Wickham Wanderers' social media from tomorrow. Uh, we'll be hearing from Glyn Creaser next. Online, on Radio Player, and on 106.6 FM. This is Wickham Sound. Part two of this week's Wickham Wanderers show coming up, still to come in the uh, final 
part. Uh, we'll hear from former manager, former manager, no, we won't, uh, for, former captain and current manager, Matt Bloomfield, looking ahead to the final game of the season away at Portsmouth on Sunday at lunchtime. But first, if you're a regular listener to the show, uh, you'll know at around this point in the programme, thanks to the uh, Wickham Wanderers Ex Player Association, we speak to. Yes, you've guessed it. A former player, and this week I'm uh, very excited and uh, pleased to welcome back our very first uh, Wickham Wanderers ex-player who uh, we spoke to uh, when the show began uh, way back in, in Series 1. Uh, we're on Series 3 now, if you're new to the show, by the way. And uh, do cast your mind back 30 years, almost to the day, depending on when you're listening to the show, uh, and uh, a fantastic result against Ron Corn, which saw uh, the uh, person that we're about to speak to uh, lift the uh, conference title. Uh, Glyn Creaser uh, joins us uh, this evening. Good morning. Uh, good evening, Crease. Hello there. How are you? Really good, thank you. And more importantly, uh, for, for reasons which I'm sure many fans know about, how are you? Oh, yeah, I'm not too bad, thank you. Yeah, I'm still breathing and still able to take part in these uh, these um, interviews with you guys. So uh, yeah, grateful for that. So yeah, all good. No, it's really good because obviously a lot a lot's happened to you since we last spoke. Indeed, yeah, for sure. Um, a little bit unexpected, I guess. So although I had previously had a problem with the ticker in uh, 2004, um, but that was all relatively straightforward. But um, for some odd reason, I decided to take part in a charity game and uh, found myself lying in the change room at half time. Um, yeah, dead. So, um, but <laughs> aside from that, um, <laughs> after the uh, the medical people that did their business um, did their business, they uh, managed to get me back, and um, thankfully, I'm still here. Well, it's fantastic news. I'm sure, you know, uh, fans listening are so pleased to hear that, that you. I, I, I assume that, that you're well now. Yep, yep. Everything's um, everything seems to have settled down. Um, I don't think I'll be taking the boots. Well, I might put the boots on to go to training with the chaps on a Tuesday and a Thursday and be there on a Saturday. But it won't be me running around like a, a complete lunatic. So, and it, so it sounds. I mean, <laughs> it sounds the, the way you sort of describe it as quite a sort of a minor thing, but obviously a huge kind of event. And you must be so grateful for for those that were able to kind of help you on the day and, and throughout your recovery, really. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the people at the ground. Um, at the, I mean, before the game, they said obviously, obviously, there was a number of people there, including myself and others that were older than me that took part and um, and what have you. But obviously, I had a, I obviously had an under, another underlying problem there, which um, after um, doing some excessive, well, I say some excessive, some running around in the, in the, probably the warmest day of the year. Um, yeah, they, they were brilliant. The people, that, the, the the doctors and um, the hospitals and everything else were absolutely superb. That you know, it, it shouldn't come as a surprise to us. You know, with the NHS and everything else, they're, they're they're great people and they know what they're doing. And I was in I was in good hands. I went in on the Sunday, came home on the Wednesday. <laughs> Fantastic. And it's so I would say so so pleasing to hear that you've you know you've recovered well. And and as we touched on at the beginning, I guess it doesn't feel like thirty years ago that, that as you say you, you were lifting that trophy. No, no. Well, well, to be fair, I wasn't expecting to to lift the trophy. I, I, I didn't have any. I didn't have a shirt tucked up, my jumper, waiting to put it on like JT does, and <laughs> uh, um, or he has done in the past. But um, no, the, the lads put, threw it upon me and surprised me to uh, and said, "You come on, you're going to go up and get the trophy," which I was absolutely. Well, I was delighted about it, obviously, and um, for them to think of me in that way was um, was a was an honour. Because in case fans don't know, you told the story when we last spoke to you, but uh, you had a bit of an altercation with a, a forklift truck. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It was, uh, yeah, it was. Um, yeah, it was I was thinking I was practicing me, um, me touch, but I didn't use my head this time. Perhaps if I used my head, I wouldn't have been in the problem. But yeah, I think it was after a trophy game on the Saturday, on the Monday, Monday lunchtime. I I had an accident at work, and uh, yeah, broke my calcaneum, and uh, as a result of that, I had to have various operations to uh, get it get my foot back to something like normal skin grafts and such like so yeah so that was that so I mean I think I'd, I'd seen six months off of the season and then obviously the, I missed the back end of it but the lads were absolutely brilliant again you know we, we managed to get a promotion that year which was you know it, uh, but whilst whilst I wasn't involved on the pitch I would certainly like to think I was involved off of it so Is it true to say the uh, forklift came off unscathed as well? <laughs> yeah, the forklift was all right. I mean, it, 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 I'm not sure I under, understood the uh, probably the harsh words I said at the time, but yeah, uh, 
the forklift, every, <laughs> no forklifts that were harmed in the <laughs> making of this programme. So, yeah. <laughs> but such a special team as well that year, and also, you know, that some of the results that you had too leading to it. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, was, yeah, I mean, the, the side... The side, the side was was strong. I mean, it, it just seemed to be getting stronger all the time. Um, you know, from, from from probably since we went to Adams Park, in fairness, um, and Martin brought in you know one or two, and you know it wasn't overloaded, but what we had, and, and you know, I guess it has to be credit to it's like Jim Kelman in some respects because I think Martin used probably the nucleus of the squad that he sort of put together in the, in terms of not to say used, but. Um, put his faith in us and um, we seemed to just get on and do the job and there was a really strong spine to the team as well and, and real great consistency as, as well yeah for sure I mean yeah, I mean I from from a um, obviously we had Grant, we had Johnny Granville in 91 and, and we had Heidi in um, 93 I think um, and from there we had the likes of Matt Crossley and Andy Kerr in, in the centre of the back four and Jason Cousins came in, Jeff Cooper was there. Um we had Ryan and Stapleton which again the consistency was was pretty there and then obviously up top we had the likes of Steve Thompson came in. I don't think Westy was involved that year, but then um obviously Scotty, um Hutchie, Hakan, you know, it, it was just uh, it was a good group of lads and and they had a, a really good a really good bond to be fair and, and they still have and were there any games in that sort of campaign that really stood out the most for you you know what I was thinking is before you called I, you know my memory of, it, of of a lot of it now is, is I mean you remember certain things when you talk to the lads about certain things it sort of pops back in your mind you oh yeah I remember that and but do you know what most of the games I, I don't remember a lot of them anyway <laughs> I used to prepare in my own way, and um, it, when I was playing, and and it was just, I got myself in a position where I knew I was going to go out there and do the best I could for the lads, and you know, I I always I always did that. I prepared, I prepared my way, um, and I think I, I don't know whether Martin would agree with it, but I think he would be disappointed if I didn't have three or four points on a Friday just to get myself in the in the right in the right zone. Um, but yeah, I, I mean. Memory wise, I mean, obviously winning that final was absolutely awesome, and then obviously ultimately picking up the the league, the league winning the league as well was was absolutely fantastic. And the supporters have always been so solid in terms of you know how they go about they, the support they gave us in '91. I think we had twenty five thousand people there at Wembley, and then again I think it was a thirty odd thousand crowd on in '93, uh, and then. We had a full house on the last day of the season when we won the trophy. So uh, when we won the actual league, so it was. It, it, they've, they're all, they've always been brilliant and so supportive, you know, and, it, and and that makes a massive difference. And of course, playing Preston as well with the likes of you know David Moyes and of course Gareth in that team too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was funny because I was looking at a picture of us walking out, and I think, and I, I saw the, I saw Gareth in the background wearing the Preston shirt, and I thought. Oh, there's Gareth. I didn't even know he was playing that day. To be fair, um, uh, genuinely didn't know he was in the in the side. Uh, I knew obviously Moisey was playing, um, but um, it was it, yeah that that was a fantastic day. I mean, listen, you know, I think you know Martin Martin said it himself. You know, it's like you you <laughs> you um, you lose selection if you if you lose, and you've indicated in selection if you win, and it's just. It was one of them where I don't know everything on that day just seemed to click, and I've, I've watched back um, the final uh, against Preston, you know, the playoff final, and some of the football the boys played in front of us was absolutely outstanding. And did it feel at the time like it was a really special time for the club? So obviously, you just recently moved to to Adams Park, and, and you know, riding high in, in the in the non-league as well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, uh, again, for, I, I guess there was almost an expectation. We knew. I think we knew inside how good we were in terms of if we all clicked on the day and we went about our business in the way we knew we could, then we knew we would win football matches. You know, we could score and, and we, we could defend. So um, as, as simple as that sounds, that is primarily what it's all about. Um, to stop them from scoring and try and score as many as you can. Um, and then we had uh, we had our cups along the way, but, um, you know, we never... We were never a side that was ever going to get beaten by a lot, but we would always be able to to win games um, through, 
I think the togetherness as much as anything else. But the time, the actual time from, you know, even when we left Lokes Park with the likes of, you know, um, the George Best and John Robertsons and, and all, the, all the chaps that Martin got down to that particular game to um, close the ground down, if you like. Um, from there onwards, it was just... It was. I think. I think the term's been used on one of the one or two of the videos. The only way is up, because um, that's what it felt like. And we went into a fantastic stand, fantastic new new ground, with players who could exploit the space that we had on the pitch. I think that was something that really stood out, wasn't it? The real kind of exciting attacking style of football that you were playing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, you, and and why wouldn't you with the likes of Carroll and um, Guppy um, in areas of the park where you've got, you know. Two, two strikers that want to get on the end of things and know where the ball is going to be put and the likes of the Stapletons of this world and, and the Keith Ryans were, who had just a phenomenal engine on them that could get them up and down the pitch all the time. It was um, it was brilliant. And then the likes of Thompson coming in and then more latterly, um, Simon Garner and Big Cyril Regis was with us for a little while as well. Um, it was, you know, it was just, it was amazing. We just had, we had quality. But we, I think we knew we had that in, in terms of, you know, providing we give them the service. And I think, uh, obviously, Dave Carroll and, and Steve Guppy did it in in bundles at times, you know. And a great camaraderie in the dressing room as well, which obviously helps. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, yeah. There was there was no egos, um, you know. It was, uh, if there were, they weren't in there long. Uh, and it was certainly... Um, Tempered down if 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 anybody felt that way, but it, it, in, from my time at the club, it, I never noticed any of that sort of stuff because it's uh, it just it's just not how things work. And if you want things to work well and, do, and go well, then you you know those things have to be nipped in the bud. But we managed that ourselves in many respects. But we had a, a fantastic group of players um, with the right attitude, and you know they were winners. He's playing over 200 times, you know, yourself, and obviously, you know, there are so many other uh, players around that team. It must have been so easy for others to come in, you know, and feel really settled and, and feel part of that team as well. Yeah, for sure, yeah. And I, I, I think, I, in, in some respects, I think I felt that was part of my job is to anybody that came in, whether they were new or, or from other clubs or whatever, you know, you make them feel welcome and try and help them as best way you can if, you, if, they, if they want help. But ultimately, you know, they have to they have to want to be part of what we've already got, and you know, be part of that that bonded unit that we had, and um, and, and and we had that as well. In, in you know, we had Kim Casey that came in, uh, Hakan Herretin came in, um, and there was a few others that, that, were, that was in on the on the peripheral, if you like, um, on a few occasions. But they always felt part of it, and that's the most important thing because it's you know it's about it's about the squad and it's about the the whole unit rather than individuals. And obviously I remember the, the time very well coming along as a, a supporter and it just felt like, you know, there was a great relationship with both the, the players and the manager, obviously, and, and the manager and, and the fans as well and, and the players. Oh, for sure, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, <laughs> Martin was pretty clear about what he wanted and, I mean, he, he didn't, he didn't hold his punches um, when, when he felt there was need to say something and, uh, by the same token, he would praise you and um, and tell you if you did well and you know and what have you. But um, yeah, the relation. I think I think the relationship between I think as far as I'm aware, that Martin and the, and the supporters was good. Um, but certainly he, he had our respect in in terms of you know obviously his manager, managerial prowess, if you like, um, because he'd been there and done it. You know, I think I've seen him. I've seen him a couple of times on the telly talking to individuals that haven't been near a European Cup or even at a final, and uh, he has he has no bones in, in in making a point of that. He says, oh, "Just remind me how many times you've been to the European Cup final," and <laughs> and they haven't. So um, he's got that in his armoury as well. So he's got he's got um, plenty of experience and knowledge to fall back on. Certainly from the point of view of playing for obviously Nottingham Forest at the time, when under a, probably one of the best managers this country's ever seen. And what was it like, sort of being part of that team as well, and in that dressing room? I loved it. I loved it. It was one of those where you look forward to going. You know, you just want to be involved with the chaps, um, having the crack. You know, <clears throat> going about your business, coming off and having a couple of beers afterwards and celebrating or, or whatever. And uh, it was, it was, yeah, it was, it was good times. Absolutely amazing times. And obviously, winning helps. Um, 
but even you know, even when on bad days, if you like, when we might have lost one nil or lost two one, you know, no one was down because you knew you had another game to put that right. And you know, we had we we took our chances and we took our opportunities at the time to well, for all the lads, you know, to to make names for themselves. And I think that most of that squad, I think, if you asked, I probably I have to remember I'm quite a lot older now, but. If you asked a lot of the people that were around at the time, they were probably some of the happiest days. And I know Gareth's done fantastically well in his time at the club with what he's achieved and got him into, you know, the higher levels. Um, but again, that's a, that's that now is a different beast. We had we had a lot of um, players who were who were turned professional from the non-league setup, um, and obviously as you go into the professional game and you so you're you're bringing in, if you like, you're bringing in more professionals into the professional setup. Um, I think you, you know, I don't, I'm not sure you get the same bond as we had as a group of players, um, in quite the same way because we we grew up together playing the game in non-league and then managed to get into the league and managed to find our way into the, um, what was it then, second division, wasn't it? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So was there a point where you thought, oh, we could we could really do something special here? <clears throat> yeah, I think we we always believe we could win, we could win any game we went into. I think we, we no one went in there thinking, oh God, we're going to get done today or anything like that. It was we were we always went out there with a positive attitude, and if we started right and, and got it right, then you know we would in, invariably win the game. Um, I think we went to was it Carlisle and the. Um, I think this was it this, the first leg of the um of the playoffs at Carlisle and then we obviously got them back home but um we drew up there the first game of the season and we 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 didn't fear going there and we was in a much better place then. Um but I think as Simon Garner used to say about the um the playoffs, he thinks if you finish fourth you should get promoted. And that as it as it turns out, we finished fourth and we did get promoted, but we had to go via Wembley. So it's always a nice day out, but it obviously makes it much better if you win. <laughs> no, absolutely. And I guess as well, sort of expectations, both of the fans, but also you know uh, you as a group as well, you know, were, were quite different to sort of what they are today as well. Yeah, I'd imagine. I would imagine today the the, um, the way that the, the supporters look at it, I'm thinking they they want us to obviously do well, but uh, how they go about getting out of the division they're in now and then getting it up again and then pushing potentially to go up again <laughs> um, it, it is a massive massive ask you know because um, whilst it's I guess in, in the scheme of things Wickham's still quite a small club in that in some respects but it, you know to be up there and fighting with the big boys it's um, it'll take it'll take an awful lot um, but I mean uh, I think I think they're rather die hard group of people that live in Wickham uh, have grown up watching us and and um, and still as engaged with being a supporter of Wickham Wanderers Football Club as they've ever been, um, which is important. It's important for the town, it's important for the club. And I imagine as well a huge sense of pride for yourself, obviously leading the team, but also you know the other members of that group for, for really kind of setting the, the foundations, if you like, as to where the club are now. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I had the... Uh, I had the uh, I thought I was playing for Barnet on a Tuesday night at Wickham and got sent off. And uh, I had a phone call the following day telling me I was going to speak to the Wickham people. And um, um, yeah, I, I think I'd had one or two phone calls after that asking me to uh, to return um, because Barnet didn't have a particularly good run after I'd been um, <laughs> got rid of, if you like. Um, and I just decided to stay where I was. And you know, <laughs> they always say don't have any regrets, and I don't. I don't have any regrets at all. Whilst Barnet went up before Wickham did, um, what we achieved and what I've done at the age that I was at the time, which I was probably about 31 uh, when we first went to Wembley, um, and then beyond that, if it, it, you know, I don't. I, I don't remember Barnet doing any of that. You know, and something uh, so special as well about a, a what you've achieved, but also you know I, I assume you're still in touch with with many of those players today, and obviously you're still uh, involved with the, the ex players as well. And I, I don't think there are many kind of industries, if you like, where, where that happens. No, no, absolutely not. Uh, but it does take a little bit of effort from everybody, you know. <laughs> um, 
you know the ex players association is 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 what it is you know and it's it's about getting as many of the people involved with that um to uh to obviously understand and, and, and maintain. I mean, we've still got loads of ex-players. John Maskell, you know, we've got um, Sammy and and um, Vince involved with the committee. But, you know, they they put a, a lot of time and effort and, and work into that. And then it's up to the, the ex-players, if you like, to take some responsibility for joining the, the ex-players association. For £20 a year is, is, is nothing. We have a few events where you get a chance to get together and... Uh, have a pint, a glass of wine, or have a chat, or just see some old faces and have the crack. You know, it's uh, that's equally as important because you know some of some memories as you get older are hard to hard to keep in your head, or you you just think actually, you know what? It's it's really nice that that one night or two type or two occasions, three occasions a year where you you see some old friends. It's uh, uh it's just a, it's just a really it's just a really nice thing to do. And the club's always very welcoming for for any ex players that go back down there. So uh, I would, you know, certainly probably be promoting the ex players association to uh, for everybody to get involved. Where you know, if they if they want to, of course. Um, but it's uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's very enjoyable. Well, does it feel like thirty years ago? I guess obviously, obviously, what you've been through in the last couple of years, anything, anything would feel like it, it a long time ago. But you know, it was, I was speaking to JDT the other day, and it was just like he said thirty years. I was like, oh my god, yeah. And then I went to, to, to ninety three, twenty one. Oh, bloody hell, it's thirty years. You know, it's just <laughs> it, it, no, it it, it, it doesn't. It, it, you know, we still still talk about it. Still, still go on to whatever it is YouTube and have a look at you know some of the old footage of games and interviews and stuff like that. Um, but it certainly doesn't feel like it's at that, that length of time. Um, but it, it, they're great. It's, it's, it's great to have the memories that, you, that we've all got. You know, absolutely amazing to have those memories about. You know, but, uh, I think you, you probably have memories of, of not being successful. But obviously, when you are successful as a as a group, then you know that that's that's really special. And of course, shorts were considerably shorter then. <laughs> Yeah, it was either like, that or my bum was big, well, I don't know, whichever. Um, yeah, but yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, some of the baggy ones now, they'd suit me down to the ground. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, they were definitely shorter, for sure. Well, it's been a real pleasure to speak to you. Really pleased um, that, that, that you're well and, and really nice to, to reflect on, on the memories with you. Yeah, sure. Thank you very much for calling. Uh, brilliant to speak to you. Uh, Glyn Creaser speaking to us here at Wickham Sound. Online, on Radio Player and on 106.6 FM. This is Wickham Sound. Final part of this week's Wickham Wanderer show. Still to come, we'll hear from manager Matt Bloomfield. Uh, also on the show, if you're a regular listener, you know we like to uh, feature Wickham Wanderers women and uh, find out what uh, the under-18s, the reserves and the first team is up to. I'm very pleased to say uh, Craig joins us from training at Burnham. Uh, very good evening to you. Evening, Colin. How are you doing? Really good, thank you. And you? I'm very well, yes, and absolutely. I'm here at training at Burnham. Uh, Thursday night, so Tuesday and Thursday we're down here at Burnham. And, uh, yes, I'm live, live at location tonight. Absolutely, yeah. I can't, can't, get a, can't get enough of it. So plenty going on still, really, because uh, obviously the, the first team have finished. But um, really good news. Uh, we spoke to, obviously, the, the manager of the reserves, and uh, they were preparing for their semi-final, and they're through to the final. Yes, Colin, they did. They beat uh, beat Watford 4-2 away uh, on Saturday, which uh, they lost twice in the league against them. So for them, it was an incredible achievement and a, and a massive coup. So, uh, yes, they've got to Fulham uh, a week, Saturday on the 13th of May. Uh, that game's going to be a neutral ground in Cambridge. So uh, we're going to be taking a big following up there. Lots of uh, friends, family and close support will be going up to uh, to Cambridge on the on the 13th. A fantastic achievement and real great sort of credits to those involved, both the coaches and obviously, you know, the sort of strength of uh, of, of the side. Absolutely. And I think for most of the season, the under-18s have almost been like the backbone of the club because in times when the, the first team and the reserve team have needed uh, vital players, the uh, the under-18s obviously supplied and, and supplied that. And with both of those seasons finished, the under-18s are able to to. to to field their, their 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 maximum team and their best team, and I think that's why you know you've seen them beat uh, beat Watford and hopefully push Fulham on the thirteenth all the way. Well, we mentioned the first team season is finished, but uh, the football's not really finished because there there have been some post season friendlies too. Yeah, a couple of postseason games played Abbey Rovers, uh, so Abbey Rangers, beg your pardon, um, a couple of Saturdays ago, a couple of Sundays ago, sorry, and one four one, and then they played uh, the Leicester City uh, Academy, which was an incredible uh, sort of experience. 
um, away at the training ground uh, Sunday just gone. Um, so yeah, uh, Carl's very keen to kind of keep the momentum going from the season and keep keep uh, keep the girls um, playing. Um, but then to, to add to that, on the 14th, the day after the under 18s final, we'll be doing a sort of family and sponsors day. So we kind of give thanks to all the sponsors that have sort of uh, supported us and backed us this season, and all the individual sponsors that the girls have had as well. There's, you know, all of them have, have individual sponsors that sort of help them with fees and, and, and sort of running costs and things like that. And um, and obviously the friends and family and stuff, you know, a lot of the girls that are, you know, especially are under 18s, obviously they can't drive, they're not old enough to yet. Um, so um, without parents and uncles and aunties and grandmas and granddads, it would, you know, we wouldn't be able to do what we do without them. So yeah, the 14th of May against Maidenhead United, uh, we're going to have a little sponsors cup day. So a little, uh, little post-season sort of uh, uh, friendly trophy on the line as well, which will make, uh, make for good fun. So give us a bit of a flavour on what goes on on a, on a Tuesday and a Thursday night. Well, on the Tuesday and the Thursday, I guess at the moment, I'd say right in front of me right now, you've, we've got uh, we've got two sort of things in operation. We've got the uh, we've got the under 18s um, on one side of the pitch, uh, working together, working as a unit, and then to the left hand side of me at the moment, we've got the sort of mixture of firsts and first reserves, a few trialists. Um, you know, on, and in the middle of the season, uh, Colin, you, you, we can have three different groups. You know, the reserves, the first team, and the under 18s all training individually with their managers and their coaching staff. So, and then we generally come down for so, you know, towards the end of training. We normally play 11 v 11, um, and, um, and you know, get some get some vital experience in regards to to try new things. And this is the best place to do it. So it's very very busy right now. There's lots of people here. So tell us what's next for both the under 18s and the reserves. So obviously the under 18s have got the final. Um, that's, that's you know we covered that. That's that's really big um, for the reserves. Uh, transition time. The reserves will be no more. It's going to be rebranded to the under 23s. Um, that's going to be uh, a, you know for us a positive step a step forward uh, from a club point of view to re, to kind of rebrand and and follow that sort of that suit of, of not being a reserve team. Um, and just being an under-23 side. So that's them. And, you know, again, that we're looking to add to both of those squads through through trialists and um, and girls moving up um, because of age necessity from the under-18s up to the under-23. So there'll be movement from that as well. Um, and then, obviously, the, um, you know, again, the first team, we're looking for girls to... To, to come and make that step up from the from the unders, uh, whether that's now under 23s or the under 18s to that first team, and I think training is a perfect chance to do that. You know, you can pit yourself. You know, if you're an under 18 or, a, or an under 23, you can pit yourself against a first team player in training. And if you if you do well at that, then when you do get called up to the first team, it's not so much of a of a, of a shock if that makes sense, and much of a culture shock when you do play against uh, against um you know first team football against uh, against women as opposed to girls. And a great opportunity, I'm sure, for aspiring um, youngsters who, who'd like to get involved. You know, with the, the coming season coming up as well, real plans in place for, for recruitment as well. Yeah, and if you can check out our social media, mainly uh, you know, it's on Facebook, but mainly on Twitter, we we are posting um, links where people can uh, apply to come for a trial. Obviously, we want to know a little bit more about them before we uh, we we, we uh, allow people to come down. Um, but yes, you know, we're very active at the moment in in that and looking for postseason friendlies, preseason friendlies, and uh, and. Um, attracting new players down to to training. It sounds a really great kind of social side of it as well, not just the football. You know, we spoke to so many players throughout the season who, you know, say it's like a family and everyone gets on so well. Well, absolutely. And a prime example of that is this Sunday where there's about 20, 25 of us and that's that's, that's players, coaches, myself um, and our partners and stuff. We're all going to go to... uh, to uh, watch a WSL game, so that that'll be nice. Um, to sort of go as a group and sort of sit back and watch the football instead of uh, worrying worrying about uh, what we're doing in it. No, that sounds fantastic. Uh, do check out uh, Wickham Wanderers on social media to to find out more. Thanks so much for your time. You're very welcome, Colin. Have a good one. Uh, you too, Craig. Speaking to us from Burnham this evening. Final part of the show. Uh, let's chat to uh, Wickham Wanderers manager Matt Bloomfield, who was speaking to us earlier on today at Adams Park uh, after uh, taking training. And uh, obviously, we mentioned that um, last weekend's result, uh, not what wanted, but really influenced preparations for Sunday's game down at Portsmouth. It obviously added a, an extra layer of disappointment and anger, I think, from the from the result on Saturday and the performance, you know, later on in the game. So I thought we started quite well, as I said, after the game on Saturday and, and brightly, but we were disappointed with how it played out. Uh, and we, we we have to make sure that our performance levels are, are right going into Portsmouth on Sunday. You said after the game about learning. Have you learned a lot from, from that game? Yeah, I actually have, actually. Um, and that's that's um, been really helpful. Um, watched the game back twice. 
taken some more from that about the players, about the situation, about myself, about the job ahead. I think in the last couple of weeks um, have been really, really good in terms of knowing what I want to do moving forward and, and how we do that. Um, obviously, you know, I've spoken several times about the respect I have for the, the job I've come into and the job that's been done previously. You know, but I think the time's right now for, for me to put my own stamp on things and make, make the team and the club my own and uh, I have a clear direction in how I want to do that and it's now about making sure I implement what I want to do. Is there an extra incentive, if that's the right word, on this, this final game of the season for, for players to really kind of like impress you in terms of, you know, I guess, sort of contracts for next season and, and, and what you're looking for? Yeah, I think there has to be um, about how we're planning on moving forward. I think we have really clear, defined ideas in our minds, but we have to be um, dictated to by um, what we have in the building first and foremost and then what we can bring in. So um, I think it's a really important weekend for, for myself and, and the boys to make sure we approach it in the right manner. I must say that the training the last three three days has been... Um, really high tempo, really high intensity, and that won't change. Obviously, you know there's some disappointed um, people at the end of the game on Saturday, but we've we've trained well, we've worked extremely hard, and and I hope that continues right through to the end of the game on Sunday. Is there anything in particular you'll be looking for on Sunday? Yes, most certainly so, and I've shared that with the boys. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing hard, hard work, intensity. Uh, any football team that. Um, represents me will re- represent that first and foremost I think intensity hard work running enthusiasm they're all the things that define us as a football club and they'll define any t- football team that I'm in charge of and, and, and we have to see that on Sunday It sounds obvious but really important to be ending on a high as well Most certainly so I wanted that last week and it didn't happen so I certainly want it to happen on Sunday And will you be expecting a particularly difficult challenge from Portsmouth as well? Yeah most certainly so you know it can't be underestimated the challenge we face you know away at Fratton Park I know there's going to be a lot of people in the ground and, and John's done a, a really good job in the time that he's been there they've got a really good squad of players um, I know they're under a little bit of change themselves in, in terms of old management and new so you know it's a tough game at a historic round that we always enjoy going to visit so we have to make sure we're ready for that and I know you spoke briefly after the game on Saturday as well about the, the ownership situation as well but again something quite exciting for fans to, to sort of look forward to yeah I, I think I have to get that balance right with my, my feelings and my thoughts and feelings of this week I've, I've had a real balance between the, the ultimate disappointment of last weekend and, and frustration but uh, the excitement of what we we're creating moving forward. I'm I'm really excited and pleased that um, the Kuhigs, you know, Rob Missy and, and Pete have acquired the extra share in the football club. I think that's a fantastic step for for us as a football club. Enables us to move forward, uh, and I'm really excited to be a, a, a part of that. I want to make sure that there's exciting times ahead, and I know there is with with the Kuhigs at the at the top of it. So, um, like I say, there's been a balance this week between disappointment and frustration from last week's game, but excitement about what the future may bring. And have there been parts since you've taken over where you, you've had to sort of think about next season already and the planning? Has that already started? It's already started. Yeah. Yeah, I think that um, you know a vital part of leadership and management is to focus on the here and now, but also have a an eye on the future because you know we have to plan for the short, medium, and long term. Um, that's what we're employed to do. We had to have our focus on you know finishing as high up the table as we possibly could, and ultimately that's what we were doing. But um, now that we have to finish the season strongly and, and move on to the summer and as, as quickly as we can to make sure we're ready. But you know first and foremost, I have to I have to say I want to make sure that we finish the season strongly. So I want to go into the summer with uh, a spring and steps. What will be your message to your supporters going into this final game? Um, I think thank you for their welcome back, thank you for their support, you know, the, re- the reception I received in the in the bar after the game on Saturday from those that stayed to, to see me I thought was, was incredible and I, I was certainly extremely touched by that, very, very touched by that um, there's incredible supporters at this football club undoubtedly, there's incredible people here, it's one of the reasons why I stayed so long the first spell and I, I don't want to create a, a, a big future moving forward so thank you for their support uh, and also to reassure them and for them to know that you know we will be working all summer we won't stop um, and making sure that we're ready for pre-season and, you know um, we're excited for that and um, we'll finish strongly on Sunday and then we we make sure we're ready for pre-season if you're going to Fratton Park on the final game of the season do enjoy if you're not you'll get full live commentary here on Wickham Sound and on Wanderers TV as well join us for the next and final Wickham Wanderers show next week